MedCram.com. Well, welcome to another MedCram video. We're going to talk about xanthan gum and why this food additive, according to new research, may not be calorie neutral. Yes, it actually may be adding calories that aren't counted for in the packaging and also how that same research seems to indicate that this food additive may be changing your gut microflora. As you can see here, I picked up a package of vegetarian, or in this case, vegan chili. As you can see, it's vegan. And notice that xanthan gum is right there in the ingredients list. And this food additive was actually approved back in 1968, and it was approved to be used in food for basically support of the other ingredients, but also thickening. It's a very viscous molecule and can make things thick very quickly especially when you want to make things gluten-free because gluten also does that. And so xanthan gum is something that you see a lot of in gluten-free food, which is becoming more and more popular because of the allergies against gluten. But one of the things that you have to understand is when they calculate the calories in this, even though xanthan gum is a polysaccharide, it does not or it should not theoretically contribute to the total calories. And the reason is, is because normally our body can't break this thing down. And to understand that, we gotta go and look at a little bit of chemistry. So what we see here are the molecules maltose, lactose, and sucrose. And all of these are disaccharides, meaning that they are two sugars that are combined into one. And notice that the oxygen molecule is in between all of these disaccharides. Well. Maltose and sucrose are similar in that there is a specific linkage here where the oxygen molecule is on the underside of both the glucose molecules. And here, the oxygen is on the underside of both the glucose and the fructose molecules. And that's known as a alpha-1,4 linkage, and our body can break that down, as opposed to lactose. Here with lactose, this is what's known as a beta-1,4 linkage, and that's because the oxygen molecule is on the underside of this glucose on the right, but it's on the upper side of this galactose on the left. Human adults typically don't have this enzyme and aren't able to break down beta-1,4 linkages very well. And as it turns out, xanthan gum is made up of 1,4 linkages. So once again, let's look at xanthan gum. As we said, it's made up of beta-1,4 linkages. The starch molecule has an alpha-1,4 linkage, and the xanthan has a beta-1,4 linkage. And as a result of the beta-1,4, normally the human body can't break that down. Now, because the body can break down starch, that leads to calories, specifically calories from carbohydrates. But because xanthan gum cannot be broken down, that does not lead to any calories, it is thought. Now you should also know that xanthan gum also has other carbohydrates that are linked to these chains. And this is basically what the thinking was up until now, from 1968 when it was approved. Enter now this paper that was published in the journal Nature Microbiology, titled Mechanistic Insights into Consumption of the Food Additive Xanthan Gum by the Human Gut Microbiota. And what they found was that while it has been considered that xanthan gum cannot be digested, that in the guts of particularly humans from industrialized country is a bacteria from the family Ruminococcaceae. And that bacteria, along with Bacteroides intestinalis, is able to process the xanthan gum and also to cause the release of oligosaccharides, which are basically sugars, and later can be converted into short-chain fatty acids. So what they're saying here is that the Ruminococcaceae family bacteria plus the Bacteroides intestinalis can together break down this xanthan gum into digestible units, which can then be converted into short-chain fatty acids. And this can be converted into calories for the human host. Furthermore, what the research is showing is that not everybody around the world has these bacteria growing in their gut. It seems as though those people with more westernized diets, where they are having processed food with xanthan gum, tend to increase the amount of population of these types of bacteria. 
Now, recent research across the board has shown that the gut microbiota is extremely important for health. I don't think we know currently at this point what the significance is of these bacteria in the gut at this point. We certainly didn't know in 1968 what the significance was of the bacteria that were in our gut. And we certainly didn't know, and didn't know until just now, of course, that this can lead to increased calories, of course, if the gut has these bacteria in it. I find it interesting in terms of commentary that we're finding more and more about some of the things that we put as additives in processed food. And generally speaking, it's never really good news. However, when we look at natural foods, and we're finding about polyphenols and other vitamins and minerals, that we're finding out new ways how these things can be actually beneficial for our overall health. And if you are interested in learning more about optimal health, please come to medcram.com and sign up for our brand new course titled Optimal Health and Immunity Explained Clearly. We also offer continuing medical education units in this and other courses. Again, sign up at medcram.com. Thanks for joining us.